We're picking up this video with part two of a two-part solo cross-country flight between Frederick, Maryland and Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We're referencing our VFR nav log we created in Excel, which you can pick up for free at the link here or in the description. We've just reached our top of climb at 3,500 feet and we're now navigating toward our first landmark, the cement plant, which is visible off the nose. We're going to set the 300 OBS into nav 2, which is the radial from the Westminster VOR where the cement plant is. We've got the timer on to see how long it takes us to get from our top of climb to the first waypoint. We calculated it as 3 minutes and 36 seconds on our nav log. We'll compare the actual result when we get there. This current heading seems appropriate to get us to our waypoint. There doesn't seem to be much left or right wind drift at all, though we are getting bounced around a fair amount. We find ourselves crossing over the cement plant at about the 4 minute mark, not too bad of an estimate. While we're up here, let's get a look at our true airspeed. We can get the outside air temp in Celsius, which is 11 degrees. The pressure altitude we can read off the altimeter. If we were to set the altimeter to 2992, what would it indicate? We're at about 3020 now, so a reduction of about 0.3 inches on the altimeter would equate to a drop in 300 feet indicated, or a pressure altitude of 3200. Let's use the figures 10 degrees and 3000 feet for simplicity. We'll twist the knob on the ASI to align 10 degrees with 3000 feet. Now the white outer card which reads true airspeed will indicate correctly. During flight, we're always going to ensure that our directional gyro is aligned with our magnetic compass and reset it as needed. Let's set the OBS for the next waypoint, Carroll County Airport, which is on the 355 radial. It's out there off our nose to the right. The waypoint itself is a few miles west of the field on the extended center line of the runway. So we'll be there when we're essentially abeam the center line. We'll continue in this fashion, timing our legs between waypoints and backing it up with the VOR radials we determined in our nav log. After Carroll County, we switch over to using the Harrisburg VOR for radials. Around the Maryland-Pennsylvania border, we get a handoff. November 518 Foxtrot Tango, contact Harrisburg approach 126.45. 126.45, 518 Foxtrot Tango. Harrisburg approach, Skyhawk 518 Foxtrot Tango, 3500 VFR inbound Lancaster. November 518 Foxtrot Tango, Harrisburg Approach, Roger, Harrisburg Altimeter 3021. We continue our pilotage, hitting Lake Marburg, and then proceeding on to Dallas Town, then the Susquehanna River, with the bridges off to our left. At that point, we're about 20 miles from our destination. This is a great time to begin the arrival briefing using a memory aid I like using called WIRE, Weather, Instruments, Radio, Entry Brief. W is Weather. We already set the ATIS up on COM2 active, so we turn it on and listen. Runway 8 is active. I is instruments. We make sure our altimeter is set to the reported reading and the DG matches the compass. R is radios. Let's put tower into COM1 standby, 120.9, and ground into COM2 for now, 121.8. Finally, E is entry brief. How do we expect tower to tell us to enter the pattern and land? The winds are calm and the ATIS is reporting runway 8 is in use. We're on a 060 heading very closely aligned with the runway already, so I would expect tower to tell us to just make a straight in for runway 8. Note that this is different than how we'd enter the pattern at a non-towered field, where we'd want to maneuver for a traditional 45 degree entry to the downwind. We also want to brief our taxi. We're parking at the terminal on the south side, so we'll plan to exit right of the runway for the taxi. Okay, with the wire brief complete, let's have a look out to see if we can see the field. It's out there, the sim has the beacon light visible, but in daytime VFR like this, it wouldn't even be on in real life. We'll let Approach know we have the field in sight. Approach 518 Foxtrot Tango has Lancaster in sight, cancel flight following. November 518 Foxtrot Tango, radar service is terminated, Squawk VFR, frequency change approved. Squawk VFR, frequency change approved, 518 Foxtrot Tango. Now we can switch over to Tower and get ready to give them a call. Lancaster Tower Skyhawk 518 Foxtrot Tango, 10 miles southwest, inbound, full stop landing with information Quebec. November 518 Foxtrot Tango, Lancaster Tower makes straight in runway 8, report 3 mile final. Straight in runway 8, report 3 mile final, 518 Foxtrot Tango. So just as briefed, we get straight in. At 9 miles, we can begin our descent. We're going from 3,500 down to pattern altitude initially. Field elevation is 400 feet, 
so pattern altitude is 1400 feet. We're therefore losing about 3000 feet of altitude. We want to take each thousands of feet and triple it. Three times three is nine. Nine miles out then is when we begin the descent. You can add a few miles for a buffer if you want. We get lined up with the runway and report final. Tower 518 Foxtrot Tango is three mile final runway eight. November 8 Foxtrot Tango wins calm runway eight clear to land. Runway eight clear to land eight Foxtrot Tango. We'll follow the glide slope down to the aiming point and round out for a nice touchdown. Unless tower tells us otherwise, we'll make a right exit when we can. They'll come on with a handoff. November 8 Foxtrot Tango contact ground point eight. Ground on 121.8, eight Foxtrot Tango. Notice they use the abbreviation point eight. That means that it's 121.8. You'll, you'll often see ground frequencies on point eight, point nine like that. It just means that it starts with 121. We'll stop on the other side of the runway boundary line and work through our after landing checklists. Lancaster Ground Skyhawk 518 Foxtrot Tango is off runway 8 on hotel, request taxi to terminal. November 8 Foxtrot Tango, Lancaster Ground, taxi to terminal via Delta, cross runway 13 on Delta. Taxi via Delta, cross runway 13 on Delta, 8 Foxtrot Tango. We need to be explicitly cleared to cross the runway, otherwise we need to hold short. Other than that, we taxi straight ahead on Delta, pass the runway, and work our way into the terminal. We'll shut down here, maybe get a bit of lunch, and plan our return flight now that our first leg of the solo cross country is complete. To get a deep dive on navigation and cross country planning and get ready to ace your check ride, check out Flight Insight Private Pilot Ground School today at the link here and in the description.